Shut up and sit down. Well, today I'm going to do a fun project. I bought some rock lights for my uh, RV. Look like that. It came with a set of eight. It has a control panel with eight plugs. It has about, I don't know, 16 gauge wire for the power. I was looking around on YouTube to see if anyone had done this before and no one uh, had posted videos of installing these rock lights on an RV. So I went ahead and decided I was gonna make a video. Uh, because I have a 32 foot RV, the 11 feet of cable that come with the rock lights is not sufficient to be able to get the lights underneath the, the camper in the front and the back where I want them. So I went ahead and ordered um, a 10 foot extension cable. This is something you can get on Amazon for about seven bucks. So it's pretty simple. You just take the, uh, the male end of the extension and you plug it in, screw it on. And now you got now you have about 21 feet of cable to play with. Here's a uh, the pamphlet that came with the rock lights to show you the company. It's just a mini RGB rock light and it's controlled with a Bluetooth on your phone. Here's a quick snapshot of my camper, 32 foot. And right now my plan is to have uh, four lights on each side of the camper. So let's take a quick look underneath. So my camper doesn't have a lot of options for mounting um, these lights. This is a line, uh, plastic liner, so you can't see how it gives there. You can't mount it to that. I could mount it to the underside of these, of the sheet metal here, without the brackets, but I'm afraid that that would show, and I don't want to have them where you can see the lights themselves. I just want the glow. So what I've decided to do is I'll show you here in a minute, but I've got some L brackets and that way I can mount them anywhere I want along this um, frame. All right, so here's my concept here. So I got these little L shaped brackets. They were like two bucks for a couple of them each. And I got some number six bolts with a one inch washer and some lock nuts and I'm just going to use this bracket to as my mounting point and then I'm just going to use these they're self tapping three quarter inch bolts to attach to the frame with alright I'm gonna put the bracket up here take a marker Mark the holes where I want them, like that. Take the drill with the self-tapping three-quarter inch bolt. one line it up on your little hole there hey I'm not a professional <laughs> part of YouTube videos I always wish people showed more of is how they actually did things instead of just talking about it. I'll tighten these back down. And we're done. Oh, that spoke too soon. There we go. So, nice 
sturdy little bracket that the lights will fit right on. Just gonna paint these real quick. I don't do nothing special with this, just to make sure it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. All right, starting to lose some daylight here, so I wanted to show y'all how I am connecting these lights to these brackets. And basically, you just take this rubber bushing to come to the lights. It's got some places where you can put the cords in. So I've been using the, the one that's diagonal towards the trailer. Just put that on. And this is just a number six uh, bolt with a Phillips head on it. It's an uh, inch and a quarter long. I got them long just in case, but I really could have gone with a shorter one. So once this is kind of lined up, I just line it up on these holes that are in the brackets that came from Home Depot. I got one of these big washers. One for each. And then I got a little lock nut with a knee of, or the, I guess it's like a neoprene or a plastic that's built into the nut. And that keeps it tight and so it won't loosen up while I'm driving down the road. All right, when you're all done, this is what it looks like. The rubber bushing, the light, really nice professional looking job and then all you gotta do is just zip tie up your wires and run them to the control panel uh, I'm planning on running see this underside here has a liner there's nothing to mount to here so I'm gonna just uh, fish the cables for the other side of the trailer across here and I'm gonna mount the control box on the frame somewhere in this area all right, so I've pushed this fish line underneath there, as you can see, uh, which is just a little polyurethane pad, I think, just to hold insulation and whatever to keep the wind chill down. So I just pushed this through. It's a cool little tool I got it at Home Depot. It's kind of pricey, it's like 30 bucks, but you can't do anything without a good uh, fish line. So here it is sticking out the other end. And as you can see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out all four lights for this side and I'm going to attach them to that hook and I'm going to pull them through all at once. I've got the cables all run through this liner here and I plugged them in to the control box. So I'm thinking about mounting that control box somewhere up on the frame here and tucking away all these wires. And then that'll run up to the battery to the front of the camper. We're day two. I ran out of daylight last night. So I just wanted to catch you up on what I, what I did before I signed off. Um, as you can see, I basically I mounted the control panel to the frame. Here's all the harnesses coming off here. Here's the wires coming from the other side. And then I've already run one of the light cables into this general area. So this used uh, some screws some self-tapping screws getting them into the frame was kind of a job but um, it got done <laughs> and then I ran the cable I grounded it using a little uh, terminal connector um, and then I spliced the end of the power wire to a wire I bought at Home Depot that's a it's like a 12 gauge wire that I'm running to the front of the coach and I'm gonna tie it off to the battery box I didn't show you that I'll show you how I spliced the wires from the control panel, there is a red and black wire. The black is the ground, the red is the power. So uh, you take a terminal connector, you slide it on there and crimp it in with your clip crimpers. And you take your bolt and you bolt that right to the chassis somewhere next, or the frame of the trailer, right next to the, the control panel. And then I got this wire from Home Depot it's like a 14 strand black wire. Uh, I use black just so it doesn't stick out so bad along the black frame. And you just use a barrel connector and you connect the power and, the, and this cable together. This is going to run to the battery. Here it is installed. Control panel, cable, 
and you can see I've got the, the bolt in the frame grounding the black wire and then I've got that barrel connector going from the red to the black going to the battery. I'm working on the wiring of the box. Here's the battery cable. The battery power goes out through the J box here and ends up at some sort of bus. So these are hot wires going into the camper. So there's a penetration here in the, fi in the firewall or the frame. And I got this tool here, this fish tape from Home Depot. I was just going to use it and take it back, but man, I'm keeping this thing because it's awesome. I was able to push through that hole and come out right on the side of the frame. So I'm going to take my, my cord here or my cable, I'm going to tie it off with some electrical tape and pull it through that hole and I'm, I'm good to go. So I taped up the wire here with some electrical tape, spun it around. Now, I'm just gonna gently pull. The wire, bam, I'm golden. So I disconnected the battery and I unplugged the RV. I got my cable here coming through the firewall and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an inline fuse just uh, to give me some protection. You can get these at the auto parts store and to connect those I'm going to use these barrel connectors. Uh, you need a pair of wire strippers and you just go along here and you find the appropriate size in this area here and you kind of twist it like this pull it off sometimes it's a little stubborn pull off the shielding and get the wire like this or I always like to twist it up a little bit so this is the wire that is going into the lights I'll put this aside for now so here is the fuse inline fuse that I got and you'll see that it's already got the wire exposed on both ends so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a terminal piece like this and I'm gonna slip it on one end twist it in there seat it down real good and take my crimpers and crimp that on there using the crimp pincher part of these. I like to do it in a couple places just to get a good connection. Okay. Then on the other side, slide on. This is a barrel connector. It's called a uh, butt splice connector. Slide it over the end of the uh, inline fuse here. Get it on there good. Okay, it should fit in there nice and snug. Grab my cable to the lights. Slide it in there as well. Now you'll see I've got a lot of exposed copper in there. I need to trim this off a little bit. So take my clippers here and trim that. You don't want too much exposed metal because it might short out. And my crimpers have seen better days, so they're kind of both. Twist that up a little bit. If you have too much copper exposed, it'll if it gets wet, it might short out. So I got a nice connection there. I'm holding these together and pushing in. Take the crimpers. And I always use the blue dot when I'm using blue connectors crimp it on both ends, nice and tight. I give it two on each side and one in the middle. Just to get me a good connection. Chest it out, pull on it, looks good. So all we gotta do now is put the fuse in the, the fuse holder. So there's two different size fuses. There's a big fuse, which I bought, but it turns out this uses the smaller fuse, which I actually had in the garage, thank goodness. 
So I'm using a 10 amp to slide it in here and I close her up. And that's it. We're ready to connect this to the bus. So I've loosened this nut here and you'll see all this other stuff. Here's our cable that we made. Just slide it on. And take the nut, just slide it on there and tighten her down. And we are done. But as you can see, all the lights are functioning. I walked around the trailer. That's going to look awesome. So tonight when it gets dark, I'll give you guys a final view. There it is. All done. Looks fantastic. I had a great time with this project. Um, it was a two day project for uh, one person. Um, and you had to go out to Home Depot and get a couple of pieces of hardware and things. But take your time, do it right, enjoy the process, and you're going to enjoy the results. Shut up and sit down. Wow! <laughs>